Okay, so I've got these um, exercises that you have uh, towards the bottom of the page mostly with um, no instructions really given in the notes. And there's one command that's not mentioned at all in the notes that's going to help you a lot with all of these, uh, and that's explode. Uh, and so if you haven't looked at the explode command yet, it's on the modify menu, and it's the very bottom command always. It's one of the most common commands you use in AutoCAD. And I'll just show you with uh, something else. You can use it on uh, virtually anything in AutoCAD. So uh, here I've got the sync that I drew last week. And if I click on any of those uh, lines, you can see they're connected, which means they're polylines. And so with one of those selected, I can go to modify and then explode. And now that's broken apart. So if I now uh, select any part of it, it's a separate object. So it breaks a connected polyline apart. Exactly, yeah. And other things as well. So you'll see later blocks, uh, grouped objects. I might actually just insert one for you so you can see. So on the insert menu, you can go to block. And you might have been wondering about library parts and things that are made already for you. So if we go to insert, block, and then browse, you can choose any AutoCAD file. And, uh, and that's why there's nothing really much to uh, show you there once you know about that insert command because you don't insert uh, a different kind of file or anything like that, they're just AutoCAD drawings, like the ones... So that's like inserting an image in other exactly. programs yep. or whatever. That's right, but it's the same type of file as yeah. what you've been working with. It's DWG or whatever. Exactly, yep. So yeah, well these are, so these are bars, you can see over here the yeah. preview, so these are just like the ones you've drawn. Uh, someone's drawn that in another file um, and, uh, and saved it on its own. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, yeah. Architects or whatever draft people use. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And you, that's fine. You build up your own library after a little while and uh, I've got, you know, hundreds and hundreds of these. you've drawn and saved. Exactly, yeah. And that's why, you know, what you've been doing now, you'll be able to use all of those. You can make your own library and then add to it and you'll do that with the next project. Not so much, no, right. but there's a pretty good resource. <laughs> so this folder you can see here, it's on the P drive, and you can get that anytime under Interior Design. It's in uh, AutoCAD Library. And then uh, this one's AutoCAD 2D. There are a few folders in there, but uh, have a look and you'll see uh, the other things. So I'll just get one at random, one of these baths will do. And um, maybe better one than that though, actually. So where's the... Yeah, that'll do. Okay, so if I insert that, you'll see it's uh, the right size straight away. You can rotate it. But it's a grouped object, so if I select it, it's all one thing. But again, once you go to explode... Oh, under insert on the insert menu and then block, yep. Uh, and so now that's been broken apart and then you might see that it has some polylines. This one's actually all separate parts already. Oh, wow. But you can have polylines within that and then you can explode again to keep breaking it apart into the basic objects. And you can break down an existing drawing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yep. Anything that you draw. And it'll in the end it'll either become lines or arcs. And so that's why you can make everything using mm -hmm. those commands. Uh, so I'll go ahead and do the, the shared plan, which you can see starts with a rectangle that's uh, 6 metres by, I always have to look at this, 2800 I think it is, yeah. so, uh, and it starts at, uh, so I'll just put that off to the side, so 10,100,2600, just needs to be roughly in the right place, so I'm just going to draw and then choose rectangle. You could draw it with lines, but it's probably easier to draw starting with rectangle. And then I'll type in the coordinate, 10,100, 2,600. And just so it's clear, you normally wouldn't have that coordinate. And so if you just want to click somewhere on the screen to start drawing, that's fine. That's normally how you do it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And just yep, and click away. So. 
Um, so here it's just to keep the things separate. And uh, then the, um, the size, 6,000, so I'll put the at 6,000, 2,800. And you might have realised by now that you don't always need the at. It'll usually work without it. But it's not a bad habit to get into because there's an option that you use to decide whether or not the at is necessary. And uh, so uh, it doesn't hurt to put the at in. It'll always work if you put at. And so there we are. I've got my rectangle, which I know is the right size. And then I'm going to use offset. And the, uh, the wall thickness is 230. So this is meant to be an outdoor shed with uh, double brickwork, but, um, but no cavity. So that's uh, the reason for that. And I'll just select it, click inside. And then uh, at this point, it would be a good idea to use Explode. Because they're rectangles, they're all connected. And especially the outside one uh, can be exploded. So choose it and then choose Explode. Which means I can then offset each line separately. So I want to offset this one on the left. Just showing you it's a separate thing now. And we've got the, uh, the distance there, 2500 from the side, so I'll just offset again, 2500, select my line, now that it is a line, click to the right, and now I want to offset again, uh, but this time 900. So I'm going to go and choose offset again, type in my new distance, 900, enter, select a line, click to the right, and then select the same, the new line, click to the right, and then again select the new line and once more click to the right. And that gives me all the lines I need for these openings, uh, which I can then uh, trim using trim command. And here I'm going to choose the edge uh, on the bottom wall, uh, but on the inside of that wall. And you can see that it's chosen this whole uh, rectangle because it's all one polyline. Uh, I'll choose the other lines I've made as well. And then I'll just show you a good way to trim it. Once you hit enter, you might have seen if you trim the part on the inside, it'll leave the part at the top, which you don't want. So I'll undo that. And if you trim those away first, then you can trim the, way at the part at the bottom. And it doesn't leave the part at the top. You could always explode the inside to save you doing that, but uh, different ways of doing it. Uh, oh, and so I didn't trim the, uh, the inside part, so I better do that now. Uh, so I'll just do trim again and choose these lines as my edges. Enter, and then I can choose the lines to take away. Oh, now look, I'm, I'm trimming the opening there for the windows, and I'm going to draw new lines in. Uh, we haven't looked at layers yet, so uh, you'll see once I've drawn it, it might not uh, make sense. And if you've left the lines in there, that's fine. But you'll see later, once we do layers, why I'm trimming that window as well. And that's a good way of doing all of your doors and windows. And if you think about it this way, do the opening first. So work out the overall size of it, draw that in first, and then worry about what's inside it afterwards. So draw the window or the door frame once you've worked out the opening. And normally when you put your dimensions in, you dimension the opening size. And again, don't worry about the window frame or any of those things inside the opening. Um, so now I'm going to go ahead and draw my uh, door and window frame. And uh, so the door jam is the first thing, and you can see here it tells you the size. 100 by 40 is the size for both the window and the door frame or the door jam here. So I'm going to draw a line. Starting on the corner of the wall on the top, I'm going to go to the left, so I've got ortho on going to go to the left and type in 40, come down and type in 100, and I just typed in 10, so I'll undo that and make it 100, and then back to the right and 40. So if you wanted to be tricky, you could try to mirror that over to the other side, but it's probably just as quick to draw some new lines starting on the other side, 40 across. 
100 down, and then 40 back to the left. And that's a typical door jam. So most door jams are drawn that size, even though in real life they're not actually that size. That's just the size you, you draw them. And so if you remember that opening's 900, I've come in 40 mil either side, and so that leaves me 820 for the door. And that's a pretty typical door size as well. Doors vary a lot, but that's probably the most common door size you'll have. And so I'm going to draw a line. This is really important. When you draw a door, think about where the hinge is. So the hinge would be on this corner, on the inside right of that door, uh, door jam or frame. And then coming up from there, I can type in 820. So I've drawn all the physical components for the door, but then I need to draw the door swing, which is a, a symbolic element, but it's uh, an important thing. And to draw these, this is a command you might not have seen. Um, with the art command, you can use this option, start, center, end. Okay, so with, with arcs, uh, if, it's, if it's not specified, they tend to go uh, anti-clockwise. Yeah. And uh, it helps just to think about the way you draw your angles, so, and measure your angles. Angles, I know it's counterintuitive, but they're measured anti-clockwise um, conventionally. That's the, the standard if it's not specified. It's anti-clockwise, only in some, in engineering, some disciplines they measure them clockwise, but generally it's anti-clockwise. Uh, so, um, arcs go the same way. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Because you think it'd be clockwise in surveying and some engineering fields, they they go clockwise. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's right. So th yeah, that's right. Zero to the right, and then you come back to the left uh, from there to measure, and, it, and ninety is up. Uh, yeah, that's right. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Zero is at three o'clock. Exactly, and then ninety. Yeah, but I can, yeah, if it's not specified, yeah. And so when I go to start center end, I'm starting at night at, at 12 o'clock at the top of the door. And then the center point is where the hinge is. So that's where I started drawing the line on the corner of the door jam. And then coming around, you can see it's going anti-clockwise. Well, I'm, just, yeah, I'm going to the left, so I'll turn the ortho off so it's a bit clearer. So from that start point, it's now measuring... But you went back to the centre where the point. Oh, that's right, exactly, yeah. Centre's your second point, and then the third point's the end. And that'll be where the lock or the latch of the door would be. So that's a way you can draw any um, any door that you need. That's uh, always good. Cool. Yeah, I know, some people get told that, but yeah, no, it's always where the hinge. The yeah, yeah. The yeah. So that'll always work, but if you forget, another good trick to remember, you can always use a circle. Just draw a circle with centre radius, again, starting where the hinge would be. And then going to the end of the door. It should fit in perfectly. And then you could use trim with the door and the line here. Enter, and then just take that, so they have to remember which way to draw it. So um, the, the window has the same size frame, so you could draw those lines again, but I'll show you how you can copy them over. So with, uh, with copy, you can select the lines first, or you can choose the command, and then choose your objects. So I'm making a window left to right, after choosing copy, so that it only selects the things inside my window. If I go right to left, it'll select the walls as well, and I don't want that. So then I'm going to press enter to finish selecting, and it'll ask me for a base point. And so there, I'm going to pick it on the corner of the wall, and notice it's picked up those objects away from the objects themselves. So it's just to show a bit more about how these the, especially commands like copy work, when they ask you for a base point, that point can be anywhere. I thought it was the new base point. Yeah, I know, so that's the, that's the problem. You go to 
uh, place them where you want them to be, but it'll always ask you for that base point first, and it helps to give you a point to measure from. And so if you think about it, think in advance where it's going to be placed, I know there's a corner point here on that wall that I can use to place them and have them end up in that opening in the same way as they are in the door. Do you need O snap onto that? Yeah, exactly, you do, yeah. Okay, so I'll press enter to finish that. And now to finish it off, you just need to draw lines connecting all of these points. So you might think, well, why am I drawing these lines in? Then I could have just left the lines from the wall. But later you'll see, once we look at setting some layers for this, Having it with these separate lines means I can have separate or different line weights for these lines. And so if you think about it, when you've been doing your, I'm sure, your manual drafting, uh, you'd be using different pens to get your different thicknesses, and you do the same thing in AutoCAD. So these lines that I've selected would be lighter because they're below the cup line, and that, that makes it read nicely. The lines for the frame and the glass and the walls, they'd all be heavy. And if you hadn't done them the way you did them and doing the continuous line, how do you think high enough those? You'd, have to, you'd have to split them apart the way I've done it and have separate lines. So, uh, yeah, exactly. Explode it and then trim and, and do all those things, yeah. Um, and, uh, and that's important for these drawings because, uh, you know, you want to have that different, um, well, the line weight's showing the depth. Um, so it reads like a, almost like a 3D thing, even though it's a, a plan, but we're going to do the layers later. So for now, all I really need to do to finish this off is hatch. So on the uh, draw menu with hatch, you can see it says you can use ANSI uh, 51 or 31, sorry, which is this angled pattern, and then the scale um, 50 pick points and then you should be able to choose inside and then again inside that little part at the bottom enter and then OK and that'll complete it. So I'll just finish the recording there.